is a live channel's television event. Arise, O compatriots, Nigeria's call obey to serve our fatherland with love and strength and faith. The labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain to serve with heart and might one nation bound in freedom peace and unity you may be seated The Honorable Minister of Information and National Orientation, Elijah Lai Muhammad. Members of the National Assembly here, Chairman of the Senate Committee on Information and National Orientation, Senator Suleiman Adokwe, Chairman of the House Committee on Information and National Orientation, represented by Honorable Timo Tugolu, Chairman of the Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria, Mr. John Momo, the Vice Chairman of Borna Haji Asa Ibrahim, other born executives, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 60th edition of the General Assembly of the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria. Without taking much of your time, I would like to invite the Chairman of the Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria, Mr. John Momo for the opening address. Your Excellency, the Honorable Minister of Information, Al Haji Lai Mohammed. Senator Adokwe, Chairman, Senate Committee on Information and National Orientation. Honorable Olusegun Odebumi, Chairman, House Committee on Information and National Orientation, Ethics and Values. Very well represented here today by Honorable Timothy Golu, Member of the House of Representatives, my good friend EJ, Mr. Hilzua Abunayima, honorable members, uh, who is an honorable member of the House of Representatives, our keynote speaker, Mr. Ibrahim Magu, the acting chairman of the EFCC, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, vice chairman, Bon. The only other vice that I have, Zono Chairman, my colleagues and friends, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. What a pleasure it is for me to welcome you all here today to the 68th General Assembly of our great organization, the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria, born. Established over 30 years ago, one of Bond's main objectives is to serve as the voice for the nation's radio and television broadcasters by advancing their interests in federal government, industry, and public affairs. To say that broadcasting has changed since the establishment of Bonn three decades ago would be grossly understating the dynamic nature of our industry. The correct statement should be that broadcasting has changed radically 
And the key word today is disruption. A complete disturbance, disordering, disarranging, and disarrangement of the way we do our business. Suddenly, new markets are created with new sets of values that now threaten existing markets. In a nutshell, broadcasting seems to be under threat from digital predators like Amazon Prime Video, Netflix, Hulu, and other over-the-top players. Folks, this is a wake-up call. And if you can't smell the coffee, I can. So what should we do? The answer isn't far-fetched. We need to change our business model. It's no more business as usual. In fact, it is business unusual. The worrying thing, however, is that as we try to come to terms with the disruptive innovation staring us in the face, we are being made to contend with numerous problems that are inflicted upon us, like disparity in license fees between the public and the private broadcasters. Did I say broad, public broadcasters? No. Today, they don't seem to be public broadcasters anymore in this country because we all compete in this same commercial landscape for advertising. And that is anomalous. Government shall fund the public broadcasters. We are compelled to pay a 1.5% levy on gross income even when we make a loss. And most of us do. We are yet to have a roadmap to the implementation of the digital switchover in Nigeria, and we are all in a quandary. The regulator is silent thus far on many other critical issues affecting our members, chiefly among which are the compensation that should accrue to broadcast organizations who will be vacating frequencies in accordance with the white paper, the DSO. The fee to be paid to signal distributors after the digital switchover? And what would or should happen to pay TV services currently operating on the DTT platform when this switchover is affected? Now, as if these problems aren't enough and aren't enough inhibiting to inhibit our growth, we broadcasters are having to contend with dwindling advertising revenue in the face of increasing operating costs, mounting and unresolved industry debts, and a mandatory reduction of transmitting power while still paying the same license fee for the original power that we're given. We have discussed these challenges with the National Broadcasting Commission, and in fact, have escalated them to the Office of the Honorable Minister of Information and Culture. It is my fervent hope that before the end of the year, 2017, some, if not most of these issues, would have been resolved favorably.